The year is 1808 and Great Britain has just released the County of Salem's Act. A once philanthropic dream of the welfare of many mentally ill persons soon became a place of everyone's nightmares. Even before there were lobotomy and electrotherapy practices, the conditions in these asylums during the 1900s were terrible. The halls were overcrowded, the patients were subject to forced druggings, ice baths, isolations, and in some extreme cases, some of the patients were even subjected to dehumanizing experiments. The list honestly goes on and on. Now picture this, the year is 1944 and you're an 11-year-old child who had just lost their parents in a traumatic incident. You are then admitted into a psychiatric hospital where everyone calls you crazy and forces you to take pills that literally duel your reality. How would you feel? Would you try to escape? Who would you trust? Would you even be able to trust yourself? All questions for our brave little protagonist, Frambo Degenhart, to figure out. Let's get into it. Disclaimer. This game follows heavy topics of sexual abuse, depression, drug use, and lots and lots of gore. If any of these bother you, this is not the video for you. Viewer's discretion is advised. Now, before I can talk about the game's deeper meanings, I usually like to talk about the game in its entirety. Talking about the many different details and what they could possibly mean. And at the very end of the video, I would like to loop back around and talk about finer details and what type of working theories we can come up with. Let's get into it. Like many fantastical stories, Frambo begins with a tale. Everything's fine. It feels like heaven. I see my parents. They look happy. They have a present for me. I wonder. It's a cat. So sweet and pretty. Dark as the deepest night. It's Mr. Midnight. My best friend. My only friend. We're having dinner, and I see Aunt Grace too. I really like her a lot. It's Friday. My parents are going out. Aunt Grace takes good care of me. We're having so much fun. It's Monday night. I'm playing with Mr. Midnight. But something feels real bad. A strange creature outside my window. I don't like it. It scares me. Suddenly, I hear something. It's mom, screaming. I want to know what's wrong. A bright light shines from my parents' room. I go closer. And closer. Mom? Dad? Please don't. Mommy? Daddy? Fran, please follow my voice. On the count of three, you will wake up. One. 
two. Three. We come to and the protagonist Frambo seems to be reciting her experience of this traumatic event to her doctor. Barraging Fran with question after question, not really taking into account her opinions until telling her about a new medication she'll be prescribed called Duotine. Once the nurse gives Fran the meds, her reality splits, blood fills the walls, and heads begin to drop from the ceiling as a shadow figure appears behind her. She finally faints. Oh no, take her back to her room. And nurse, don't let her take this ever again. Beware, friend, Bo. If you leave the house of madness, I will hunt you down, catch you, and bring you back to insanity. Friend, wake up. The medicine. It'll help you escape. I'll be waiting for you in the forest. I love you. Chapter one, my sober day. Frambo then wakes up from her dream, heeding Mr. Midnight's words, to use the medicine to escape from the asylum and find him in the woods. So, Frambo is actually a puzzle game. Huh? I know saying that now seems really silly, seems really stupid, but at the time, for whatever reason, I just was not expecting that. Needless to say, I'm not a puzzle game expert, so I get stuck. A lot. While looking around, Frambo knocks down her curtain, obtaining a hook. She goes to tell the nurse about her accident, and through their interaction, we actually have come to find out that Frambo was asleep for three days after taking the medicine. That is some strong stuff. She leaves her desk to go fix the problem, leaving Fran to snoop around, finding band-aids, a medicine box, a gun. Wait, a gun? Even Frambo is shook by this and starts questioning why does the nurse have a gun in the first place. Unlocking the medicine box and obtaining the duotine, Mr. Midnight was indeed right, because once Frambo takes the duotine, things begin to spawn in from the other reality that she can use to aid her escape. For example, she gets a needle off of a dead nurse, and there's a secret passageway underneath Fran's bed. No, absolutely not. You cannot tell her that. But she has to know. You can't keep her away from her. The reason is more than clear, Grace. It's not. I want to take her home. Now. You can't. Fran's mental condition isn't stable yet. You don't understand her. She's a very special girl. Making her way to the exit, Frambo runs into a boy named Phil, or full name Philmore, Bronstone, another patient known by the staff to have extreme trust issues. He tells us the secret is the yellow door and to watch out for him. Him, of course, being a demon named Remor, whose goal seems to be to simply make Frambo suffer as much as possible. Fran resolves herself and looks for a way out. Fran meets four new patients who help her aid her escape in different ways. Addie Lydia, Annie, Damien, and Victoria. Addie Lydia is a seven-year-old child who has an obsession with drawing, so much so nurses have to tie her down to get her to stop. This injures her wrists, and Frambo gives her band-aids to stop, and I quote, the red milk from flowing. What the fuck am I playing? Anyways, she'll give us a green crayon. It's also stated that she was sexually abused before being omitted. A seven-year-old child? The hell? Next, we run into Victoria. Now, she doesn't give us anything, but she gives us information about the basement. She says that the doctors eat the kids' brains in the basement. Now, obviously, this isn't true, but it could be hinting to lobotomies. Hello, guys. It's Yuri. If you can't tell, I'm in a new area. 
I'm spending the, the weekend with my girlfriend, so she's at school right now, or at class right now, and the grind never stops for me. Thought I thought I was gonna be sitting around waiting for her to get home anyway. I'll just start recording. And this is a welcome change, because for this next section, I actually wanted to get into lobotomies. So, lobotomies became extremely popular in the 1940s, and to remind you, this game takes place in 1944 all thanks to a man named Dr. Walter Freeman II. He was a very big personality at the time. His goal was to simplify lobotomies, so that way any psychiatric hospital would be able to perform it, quickly being dubbed the ice pick surgeon. Due to his method performing a lobotomy with an ice pick, he would drive the pick through the thin bone of the eye socket and damage the prefrontal lobe from there. This method was first performed in 1945, so luckily Franbo had just barely missed it. But even before that, relapses were common, some patients would never even recover, and about 15% of patients would die during the procedure. Fran then talks to Damien, another patient who believes himself to be a king. Fran asks it for his cane, but Damien demands a horse in a castle. Fran draws him up a pretty picture, and the cane's all hers. Oh yeah, I also got the paper from here. Oh my god! We run into Annie next. She seems to have ADHD, as she's constantly walking around talking with her she'll show us a magic trick in the form of sleeping pills which you can kind of infer that it's just a part of her medication and this pill will also deal with the pillic guard keeping watch god <laughs> i actually genuinely hated this part this was one of the only times in the game that you can genuinely fail like if you make him angry you can't go down that same path and I was looking it up online, like, why won't he take my my spiked sweet bun? <laughs> I thought I'd never say that. And they're just like, oh, if you make him angry, you gotta go with the coffee route. But you gotta do this, that, and the third. You gotta do certain dialogue wheels at certain times. And I was, I looked it up and I was following everything. And I was like, it's not working. So I fucking hate this guy. Fuck this guy. Once getting into the doctor's office, we snag a key and then get betrayed by Fillmore, question mark. It's still not very clear if he betrayed us or not, but we do make our escape through the vents and fall into the basement where again, Remore comes to torment Fran even more, causing her to faint. Oh my, oh my dear, dear kitty, we'll, we'll soon be together be again, again, I promise. I miss you, my dear. I miss you so much. Why are you leaving? Please don't leave me, Mr. Midnight. At the end of the maze, friend. Fran wakes up and begins looking around the basement, and we do see, in fact, lobotomized patients. Some are a little too graphic to show on YouTube, or at least I just don't want to risk it. Also, remember, she isn't on the pills when she's saying these things, so this is 100% real. She makes her way to the stairs and deactivates the main door, allowing her to head towards the maze to find her sweet little kitty, Mr. Midnight. Not before Ramar tries to stop us, but being repelled by a mechanical Mr. Midnight. Fran passes through many nightmarish dark figures and escapes into the night. At, At the, the end of the maze, maze you will find the evil critters of the night. They will hunt you, they will laugh. But there will always be a good side. A cap full of nuts and bolts will always be your guide.
and that concludes chapter one of Rambo, My Sober Day. Now, firstly, I want to just get over a few little details that I kept noticing throughout, and I just didn't really have time to really put it into the actual explanation because I just I like I like saving it at the end. Okay, the chapter name, My Sober Day. That's one of the bigger nods that I get from this game that makes me feel like there is a there is there's a reason why it's called that my sober day because I think it's ironic, right? She wasn't sober. This is the day that she was no longer sober. Before today, she didn't take the duotine, which are pills. And I, I do believe there is a, an addiction factor to this. I think she did take it one time and she just keeps using it over and over and over again because if we're going to be looking at this in the light of Franbo is using this um and then we can look at her in a third person it just looks like she stole medicine and just started popping pills and left the hospital or the psychiatric hospital so i think that's definitely an, an ironic or an irony to show a troubled child maybe with a drug addiction that she's just being very delusional about and it's like oh it's gonna help me but it's really just fueling her own addiction. All speculations, obviously, I don't really know. Two, what are the dark figures? So the first dark figure we see is when she first takes the pills, right? And the one is like behind her and grasps her and she falls asleep or she faints for three days. Um, but that's not the last time you see them. You see them with literally every character. Um, every character except one, but we're, we're gonna get into that. Um, and each of them, once you would go into the second realm or whatever the reality is, you would see them and a lot of times it would just be their doubts. It'll be laughing, it'll be judging. And I believe that's kind of just the inner turmoil of a lot of the people there. A lot of people are troubled. And what's real and what isn't? I kind of touched on that before. What is real and what isn't? Because there are times where it's obviously that she's tripping balls right when she takes these things but like there's certain things that just come out of reality where she can grab a needle and it wasn't there before now it is there or when she witnesses that conversation between the doctor and grace how did she hear that wasn't she unconscious maybe this was her subconscious mind and there was a time when escaping where how to get past a receptionist is you put the key on the key holder she goes to see oh it is there and she picks it up how did Fran do that she we know she had the key otherwise the doctor wouldn't be calling the receptionist like yo what the fuck is going on so there's like elements of is this real or is this fake or is there somewhere in between is the doctor actually bad so beyond everything we're getting Franbo's point of view right and Franbo doesn't like the Dr. Yai obviously calling him an evil man but is he truly evil he's very um dismissive because when she takes the duotine she passes out he sternly tells the nurse she's never taking that shit again and so I just want to put that out there you know I'm just trying to make these make these assumptions um I don't know he was kind of talking crazy I didn't put it in the video but he was talking crazy bro uh, <laughs> I'll show you the reaction. That nigga was talking crazy. Did you break out of your room? That's not nice, Fran. Bitch, I'm 10. Don't keep me trapped here. I haven't eaten in days. I've been asleep for three days. But I'm hungry. I won't listen to any more excuses. I'm gonna die from malnourishment. Let me go eat something. You have to learn how to listen to those in charge. Is this nigga serious? After escaping from the asylum, Fran finds herself in the woods, not really knowing where to look for her kitty cat. Coming across a tree filled with tangled hair, they offer the key to Fran only if she helps get their comeback from a rat thief. Then moving forward, she bumps into an old blind ant who tells us he fed Mr. Midnight to his pig beetle. Okay, but offers a solution to cut open the pet to save the cat. Go figure, the pig beetle doesn't want to die. So 
we steal some blueberries from a pine cone family. We, while feeding the pig, the blueberries we chopped that bitch in half. The whole time it wasn't even Mr. Midnight, it was the rat beef. We combed the rat, and then we combed the tangled hair people tree thing, obtaining the key, okay? Which Fran uses to get the door open into a different dimension. What a curious, curious little, little door. door. I wonder where it will lead me. Mr. Midnight, are you here? Waking up, Fran finds herself in a very flamboyant house while wearing a cat hat that looks a lot like Mr. Midnight. She looks around the house and sees conjoined twins. This must be their house. As she pokes around upstairs, Fran sees a mother holding two twin babies, not conjoined. Hmm. Interesting. Making her way up into the attic, Mr. Midnight and Fran finally reunite, but are separated by the cage. The two share a long-awaited conversation, basically figuring out that there's a third party at hand. Mr. Midnight wasn't talking to Fran in her dreams, but felt as if someone was trying to reconnect the two of them. Poking around further, we come across the two conjoined twins as infants. The math ain't mathin'. Fran doesn't seem to care as she leaves the attic and heads back down, only to be greeted by the twins themselves. The math really is not mathin' now. They blackmail and bully Fran into gathering ingredients for their cure. See, they hate each other, and they want to be unjoined immediately. But Fran being creative tricks them into crafting a bewitching spell, which fucking kills them. Yikes. Grabbing the key and solving this weird-ass puzzle. After 30 minutes of me trying to figure it out, I'm rewarded with this goofy-ass courage the cowardly dog-ass jump scare. Fran finds the key to the cage Mr. Midnight is in, along with the photo of yet another depiction of the twins. Now this is the third depiction of the twins. I'm getting a little confused. If they were unjoined as babies, and then we see a depiction of them while they're old, and then we see them physically as teenagers, and then we see them as infants conjoined, what's real? And now we're getting a realistic one of them being conjoined but naturally? We get Mr. Midnight out of there, and we leave this island prompto, jumping from lily pad to lily pad on some crossy road as tease as game. Making it back to land, while on their way back home, Mr. Midnight and Fran encounter Remore once again, tossing us down a cliff. Don't be afraid, Fran. We always fall. After the pain, we will rise. Oh dear, Grace, don't ever leave me. Don't cry, my little girl. Your heart is pure, but your mind is tormented. You have to stay and walk your own path. Please, Aunt Grace, why won't you just take me out of here, please? You're going to leave me all alone, like my mother and father did. I'm sorry, my dear friend. You will understand soon. Grace, no, don't go. Please, please. Friend, it's time for your new medicine. When we come to, Fran is nowhere to be seen, and we're actually playing as Mr. Midnight. After some looking around, Mr. Midnight finds out that Fran is actually a tree. Some locals fly over and start attacking Fran, only stopping when Mr. Midnight shows them that she's actually human. And that is the end of chapter two, part two. And so that was chapter two, part one and two, pretty much. Obviously, like we're saying, I'm going to go over the the things that I noticed. And a big thing is 
the, the title of each chapter. So chapter one was my sober days. Chapter two, part one was symptom curiosities. And then the second part of that was double personalities. Um, I do know there was a common practice in the 1900s for anything. And I'm telling you literally anything. I'm going to get so into lobotomies, but if anything was wrong with you, lobotomy. If you were walking around, pacing around with ADHD, lobotomy. If you were, if you had, what's it called, post or bipolar disorder, lobotomy. If you had just literally anything, anxiety, gone. And so it might be talking about Fran's experience. Maybe her sober day was the day before her surgery. And then furious symptoms, um, symptoms were like, she didn't feel fear or something, right? And then maybe double personalities, her after effects or side effects of um, the lobotomy she underwent. But these are all still theories. Calm down. I'm just doing them as I hear them, as I hear it. Are the twins based on real information, but fake in Fran's mind? So now this one is a little hard. Um, the whole thing was, I think we're going through a another instance of false narratives based on false or like based on a a false protagonist right i think franbo is a troubled 11 year old child who shouldn't be in the situation that she's in but she is so a lot of things that she's seeing may be influenced by out outworldly things so what i mean by that is she just came from a psychiatric hospital is it not at all possible that these two could have been past patients in the psychiatric hospital and now in friends psychosis she's kind of just starting to see these people as villains but when we finally come across that final photo it's actually the real depiction of them they don't seem like they hate each other in that picture they seem like they hate their lives and so i don't really that was kind of my whole ordeal i don't know if the infant sewing of the babies means anything but i know that picture means something it has to mean something does she ever truly escape now that this could just fall under a little dream theory we do know that when franbo escaped she didn't really escape she went out the house right and the guard was like right on her tail the guard was there um and then remora came out killed his ass and then remora got repelled and franbo just got up and was like i'm dipping could it have been that they tranquilized her or sedated her because at the very end when she was running the guard was right on her tail so the guard didn't die so her more isn't real so i'm just thinking that maybe she tried to run maybe she figured out that they're trying to lobotomize her and she needs to find mr midnight she fucking runs and maybe when she gets knocked out for that brief second it was her being sedated and her body can't move and she just feels like a tree but i'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead it's because i don't want to fucking read this man i love this game i do but this part right here was fucking ridiculous it was so dense it was so much and i'm gonna have to get into it and i'm gonna have to try to explain what this could mean so let's get right into it chapter three vegetative state like I said, this next part is extremely dense and I'm not looking forward to it, but let's get right into it. Fran meets with the king of the realm, which is called Estria. After a lengthy dialogue, the king gives us the ability to understand their language and tells us to go see the doctor to get a human-like body. The doctor turns out to be a big furry oso ocelotl, is that what it's called? Palatris, who dumps us into pink water as he tells us it heals all wounds. The pink water is apparently the purest water in the second reality and at one point a great Vioclus, which is the good versions of the Kamalas, the shadows, sacrificed their life against the darkness. They then fell into the purest pond creating the pink water. And yes, I am definitely aware of how crazy this all sounds. Fran gets her new body and reports back to the king who directs her to seek help from the great wizard. 
if she wants to go home. After fixing the clock that allows Fran to change the seasons at will, she's able to speak with the great wizard who sends her on a wild goose chase to find stones by solving riddles. First, we need to obtain the wizard's hat by solving the mountain's marital problems. Then we need to find a feather, a lemon matches, and a fish, which then reveals the location of the stones. One being in a book in the library, another being in a dancer's shoes, a wand being held hostage by a large Vulculus statue. Of course, while looking for these items, Fran runs into an assortment of different enemies such as Fran telling herself to kill herself, another impersonating her dead mother, and finally an older version of herself gutting Mr. Midnight. All right, guys, I don't know about you, but my brain is fried. Good thing with all of Fran's effort, she's able to leave Estria and go back home, running from a troll in the fourth reality to get there, making it out safe and sound. That was chapter three. Yeah, it was a very, um... So to be frank, this, this fucking, this section here was the longest section in the game. However, literally half of it meant nothing to the overarching story. Once you got the idea, the gist of what's happening, then it pretty much just becomes like, I don't know why it was so fucking dense, but things to think about. What the hell does this all mean? So I believe in my search and research on lobotomies, I've been coming across a lot of people in the comment sections in YouTube or on or on, on uh, websites that I will often read on and a lot of their views is that they would say this lobotomy is a cure. It cures ADHD. It makes them more calm and behave better. But in reality, what people like to point out is that they're not calmer. They're just hollow shells of what they used to be and so this thing calling this this place calling a or this chapter being called vegetative state could be a hint of either she undergoing the process of getting her her rebelliousness removed her emotions removed or it could be a hint that she's heavily sedated as we've seen them do with other children within the facility Fran then is lured by her deal with teen medicine into a rope trap set by Edward, the skeleton dude we've been seeing throughout the game. He realizes it's us and apologizes, saying that he just wanted to get our attention. Dude starts telling us he'll take Fran home at 2.35 p.m., but has some maintenance to do in the meantime. He tells us to just go do some ingredients gathering. Um, when he finishes, we hop on and start doing more puzzles. <laughs> Fucking great. By the time we finish, Edward asks Fran to take care of a bunny because he's terrified of it. But to Fran, it just looks like a bunny doll. When she goes to pet it, it where it traps Fran inside, forcing us to solve yet another puzzle. Now guys, I don't want to be this guy, but I think this game may have just a little too many puzzles. At first it was cool, puzzles to get out, but now I'm just like, it where why'd you, why are you switching up on me, big bro? Why I gotta solve a puzzle because you switched up on me, bro? Once Fran solves the problem and opens the hatch, it turns out Fran's birthday is today. And Mr. Midnight and Edward wanted to surprise Fran with a birthday party and gifts. Too bad things can't be happy for too long in this game and the ship is attacked by Kamalas. Fran fights them off by splashing some water on it over and over again, but when the Kamala is finally defeated, it's much too late. The damage has already been done and the ship begins to crash land. And the ship kept going down until it crashed. Everything was destroyed. The end. But that's a very sad ending, Edward. Tell me another story, please. Alright, this is the story of Franbo and me. When she promised never to forget me, or about the magic of everything. <laughs> I promise, Edward, I'll never forget you. Good, now it's time to sleep. Expect me in your dreams, my friend.
Once landing, Franbo and Mr. Midnight seem to be alright. Mr. Midnight is actually excited because for the first time in this game, he believes that they're close to home, which they are. Fran makes it back home but doesn't seem like anyone's there. Searching for the spare key, apparently a note was left by Franbo herself saying that she took it. Well, that's impossible, right? Right? She could have taken it when she fled at the start of the game, or someone could have forged this note to stage a coup. Whatever the case, Mr. Midnight jumps inside to unlock the door for Fran. While doing so, Dr. Dern drives by and finds us, sitting he's been looking for us everywhere and forces us in the car. As we drive away, we actually never see Mr. Midnight come out of that house. So was he ever even real? During a car ride, Dr. Dern shares some interesting information. Firstly, he tells us we were never supposed to take duotine. Someone had switched the medication. Another is that apparently in the official report, Fran was reported dead by freezing to death the night of the murder. And finally, some of the visions Fran's been seeing about the twins reminded him of the cruel experiment that took place in Oswald Hospital where Dr. Oswald himself sewn some twins together and when they didn't survive, threw them down a well. A well? Are you telling me? Fran Bo climbed in that well and saw two infant corpses and laughed at them? It turns out Dr. Dern wasn't taking Fran back to the hospital, but instead a cemetery to dig up Fran's parents to see if they're truly dead and maybe to get some extra clues on what's really happening here. When doing so, a thing to note is that their heads and arms are all attached. It could be that the funeral home simply attached them back on before they buried them, but it is still an interesting thing to note. But the big mystery is, what's Mr. Midnight doing in the coffin? Before having time to really find that out, Remor pays us a visit, snapping Dr. Dern out of existence and once again making Fran faint. You're broken, little girl. The House of Madness invites you inside. If you want to find those you love, in darkness you must wake up. Wake up, friend. Wake up. So, have you ever got have you guys heard of the the notion that sometimes facts are stranger than fiction? Well, I think that's exactly what we're seeing. Is it at all possible that Franbo is seeing these things because she may have some supernatural ability? However, these things are just ultra fucked up because of the environment and because of her mental state that she's in. Could it be that her superpowers are getting fucked because of all the things she's saying like for example the twins did she craft those twins up in her head to be villains and then it really just turns out that they just simply the story scared fran and fran turned them into a villainous creature even though they were victims themselves i'm just saying so that is chapter for part one and two, which is imaginary friend and doctor's prescriptions. Now let's get into chapter five, the final installment of Frambo's journey through the five realities. Let's get into it. When Fran awakes, she is chained up to a bed as Aunt Grace stands over top of her. She begins telling Fran how delighted she is to have Fran awake and tells Fran that Mr. Midnight was the one who killed her parents. Um. That's kind of hard to believe, Aunt Grace, because we saw Mr. Midnight's dead body in the coffin along with the parents. So if anything, she's either the one who killed our parents or she's trying to manipulate a child who's going through psychosis with a blatant lie 
to get her to do what she wants to do. Anywho, Fran talks to her paralleled self to get free of her chains. Fran explores the house looking for parts to create this clock weapon she got from Palantons, but who actually got it from the clock guy repairman dude way back when in chapter 3. Once all of the items are gathered, Fran puts it into a giant Mr. Midnight who then spits out a weapon that Fran uses against the mother of Ramor. Mabuka office's waiting room. Fran skips the line by feeding some bug man her tears and then runs into Ramor who shows her the truth. No, it can't be. Stop it. I didn't do it. I didn't. It wasn't me. Stop it. <laughs> who was it, my darling? Who killed your parents? The dual little critter must suffer and die before becoming a star. Fran wakes up from her visions and decides to press forward, finding Dr. Dernan trapped within some electrotherapy device, and Mr. Midnight is trapped within yet another cage. As Fran tries to speak with Mr. Midnight, all he does is purr and make cat noises. She then goes to Dr. Dern and wakes him up by injecting some mystery drug within him. While doing so, Aunt Grace walks in while willing Dr. Oswald. She apologizes to Fran and tells her to follow, once again tricking her and seemingly killing Mr. Midnight, which sends Franbo over the edge, attacking Aunt Grace and being shot by Dr. Oswald. He says they still have time to operate on her while her body is warm. Before they have a chance, Itward and Palantons both come to save the day, healing her back to health, removing Dr. Dern's memories, and flying off into the sunset. The end. The end? What? <laughs> That's the end? That's how you decide you're going to end this whole thing? What? I keep fucking... So my final theory is that Franbo does have supernatural abilities. But what we're actually seeing is a woman or girl, I keep calling her a woman, a child with supernatural abilities having like split personality disorder and going through the stages of lobotomy. Now, I know that sounds very far-fetched and out of nowhere, but let me just explain. The described Franbo, I would say, is the word duality, right? When you think about the game's mechanics, what do you really think about? You take pills and you see an ultra reality, right? It's the duality. We see people, these children, and the psychiatric hospital where they seem to be okay and fine, at least to some degree obviously fucked up but alive and then when you go into that ultra reality the duality of the situation is deep down inside these all these children have regrets remorse they have guilt they have they have doubts they just have everything a black fog just a black shadow following them and i believe that is to show the duality even in our person frambo our main protagonist Frambo. When we later get down the road, there's time and time again where we keep seeing ourselves in a paralleled version of ourselves. We would see the duality of what if we never met Mr. Midnight? That we'd be a little girl playing with ourselves instead of Mr. Midnight, or even go and be omitted into a psychiatric hospital very early on. Also, that that gets into a whole other degree of things, but just run with it, okay? Or you'll see yourself older and address and you're gutting Mr. Midnight. It's always that Mr. Midnight is either dead or gone or you're the reason why they died. It's a duality. Also, another thing, if you actually go to chapter five, the house of madness, Ramor always talks about the house of madness being something of which Frambo runs away from. Then he'll catch her or he'll catch her and dispose of her or bring her back whatever he was going to do to her right but the chapter five is called house of madness and you're in your own house hmm the duality that i was going to talk about in this instant is that home became kind of elusive in fran's mind because you start off the game 
in a psychiatric hospital, right? And she calls this place a hideous place. She says, I, I need to escape this hideous place. But when you get all the way to chapter 5, what do you see? You think you're in the home, right? But once you leave that door, the the floor becomes tiles, it becomes bathtubs, it becomes doctors' waiting rooms. I mean, I just believe that the duality of the situation here, which she used to see as black and white, is now merging. Another thing that I really wanted to showcase, I don't even know if I'm like going to really like correlate this into the ending, but I think these were just really cool. Let me bring them up. So at the beginning of the game, hopefully your future Yuri does a hell of a job editing this, but in the beginning of the game, right before the parents die, you hear something. Play it. You hear that audio. The same audio you would hear when you take the pills. Now, there could be two different things right the reason why she takes the pills is because she wants to go into a reality she wants to see another version of her reality right so that's that could be saying that remor just simply came in to do whatever but then when you think about the game as a whole remor is definitely a part of frambo when frambo was running and escaping from the psychiatric hospital remor is the one who took who took out the security guard in Fran's mind. And when Fran Bo wanted to know who the killer was for her parents, it was Ramor sitting there letting her stab her and showing her what she did. And at the very end, Oswald saying that they basically made Ramor um, possess Fran Bo into doing what she did. And it's just like, there's all these things that point to Ramor really not being real being like a dark side a split personality a psychosis version of frambo and now she's just running away from that darker side of herself calling it a monster but to get into the real thing those were just some cool ideas that i wanted to really showcase what i actually wanted to talk about was the duality of the game and how we're probably watching frambo just go through a lobotomy change right so let's talk about it okay so talking about the you know contrary to belief not all lobotomies are the same. There are different methods of how to attack the prefrontal lobe. And I wanna tell you all about them and how they work. And so that way we can fully understand why I believe Frambo is really about a woman, a child, a girl getting lobotomy and losing her bodily functions as we know it. So the first and you know more common deals is a tropectomy a tropectomy in which is a surgeon that removes the frontal lobe no ice pick up the head it's usually they remove the skull and they actually genuinely take out the frontal lobe a lot of a very interesting thing is that a lot of surgeons back then kind of branched off because they were interested in neural sur like surgery but you know i forgot his name freeman the second uh basically was just doing it as a show and they were like this is an ethical and we're just gonna split off so a lot of people did think lobotomies could help but maybe not with a damn ice pick the next one is a leucotomy in which is a surgeon who severs connections between the frontal lobe and the thalamus. ask my girlfriend what the fuck that means i don't know and obviously the last one is called neural injections of some type of agents and that is in which the surgeon injects drugs that harden the fibers connecting the frontal lobe to the thalamus. Obviously, like I said, a lot of these are not the ice pick up the eyeball. They were actually genuine surgeries that they thought could help the patient. Of course, each type of surgery would result in a different side effects, right? We would have things that are very common, like the brain remaining to bleed after the surgery was finished, um, lack of social skills or, or social awareness. Um, they would become you know apathy they become less sympathetic dementia intelligent plummets so on and so forth but there are two things that i want to focus on that is very common for lobotomy patients to describe after their surgery and that is their lack of dreams and their lack of fear 
So lobotomy patients were often omitted for simple things that we know now as today is just depression, PTSD, ADHD, BPD, all and so forth. Any type of mental disorder people may have had, they were just omitted and they would chop out their frontal lobe and put them in a more passive, more vegetative state, right? Believing that it was a cure. So the goal for surgery was to cure them of the disease by making them calmer and a more vegetative state. And what many patients would describe is that they would either stop dreaming altogether or when they did dream, the nightmares would still be the same. However, the presence of fear would no longer be a thing. Now, let's say for example, you are a patient who just received lobotomy and you have serious fears of the ocean and you keep having these nightmares where you are stranded at sea. Well, after the lobotomy, the dream would still be the same. You would still be stranded out at sea. However, the patient would probably describe the whole ordeal as calming or the salt water feeling warm or refreshing, right? It would still be the same thing. However, you don't know the fear anymore because your prefrontal lobe is chop chop gone. So let's say, let's take the same notion and let's bring it back to Franbo. As I said, Franbo at the beginning of the game did not like the psychiatric hospital and throughout the game she remains to have that sentiment of that place was awful that place was disgusting and then she would think about her home how beautiful it was how she wants to get to ungrace but by the end of the game when you're in the house of madness this the, the psychiatric hospital has become your home the what you looked at was that was good now became the psychiatric hospital something you despise something you didn't like right he says but however at the end it is assumed to say that Fran was actually chained up at the hospital however in her eyes she was back home merged together until finally instead of escaping in a night full of shadows like she did at the beginning of the game she instead escaped through the skies with all her best friends so now with all that explained let me paint you a new picture of what truly happened in the events of Franbo on a quiet night the Degenhart family are at home just like any other night. For one reason or another, Fran suffers a psychosis episode, being taken over by her worst desires, remorse, and kills her parents. When she comes to, Fran realizes what she has done and flees the house either out of fright or guilt, taking the spare key as she leaves, almost freezing to death, but being found by Ungrace and Os in Oswald. Oswald being a very sick man, knew Fran was unwell and was capable of such violence because he had experimented on Ungrace and Fran's mother. He reports her dead, having one goal in mind, to make her suffer as much as possible. Oswald switches Fran's medication to a very strong psychedelic called duotine. Pills only worsen those suffering from psychosis. Fran remains unwell and sees the lobotomized patients in the basement as she tries to escape, being caught by the guard and being heavily sedated into a vegetative state. Fran opens her third eye, crossing over dimensions similar to what Leon 50 years prior had gone through. As her brain travels and learns of the realities, her physical body remains at the hospital until finally going through the procedure. With Fran's prefrontal lobe gone, she begins to somewhat come back to reality. However, Dr. Oswald and Aunt Grace are prepping her for more experiments. In a state of confusion, Fran sees Aunt Grace kill her cat, which sends her over the edge, attacking her and trying to kill her, letting Remor take over once again. But Oswald has to shoot her off and wants to quickly continue the experiment. While Fran slowly bleeds out, Fran doesn't know fear anymore. So in her final moments, her best friends come to save the day as they lead her to heaven, which is Estria in her head. So when personally, I'm sorry, I'm like tearing up. I was reading that. I was like, wow, when I was reading it, it's something different about typing it. And then when you read it out, you're just like, whoa <laughs> that's pretty heavy shit the ending was so ambiguous and so weird and different that it kind of forces you to read between the lines and in my head i just really like after all the the research that i've done on lobotomy and how lobotomized patients seem to have these great dreams and don't know fear but lack apathy it's just or lack sympathy it just 
screams Franbo. Throughout the game, Fran's social skills are just so weird. She'll see, as she goes through the ultra reality, she'll see blood on the walls and then directly come back and be like, that was scary. Anyway, I love this music, ding da da da, and she'll laugh, right? And you're just like, is she okay? But it's the duality of the situation. It's the duality of the game. It's it's meant to show you how things start to merge. This game really did speak to me just a little bit. Um, not in the fact that I've taken drugs or anything. I'm pretty clean on that part. But I think the game's mechanics and the duality of seeing the world in a different lens as you grow older or become wiser is something that you should really take home as like an everyday thing. It's not always black and white. You need to sometimes see between the lines. And I believe these five realities are somewhat a metaphor for that. You can't just look at things in one light and expect it to go that way. There could be something happening parallel to it. You would have no idea. But yeah, that is um, that is Frambo. Every time I get to the end of these videos, I always seem to get like really sad. And it's not that I'm sad, it's that I'm thinking. These games are all just amazing. Kitty Horror Show was amazing. Near Ultima was amazing. Fucking Cry of Fear was phenomenal. And so when I get past a game that's really heavy on topics such as depression, duality of like your split personality, who really are you? And 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 coming to grips with that. It's just it just makes me start realizing just I need to fix myself just a bit, you know? But yeah, these are my parting words. Um, if you ever feel lost, just search for people and hear what they have to say. You know, you don't have to agree with what they have to say, but different perspectives would do you good. Um, thank you so much for watching.